Hello and welcome to this episode of our election road trip, our journey across France to explore voters' key concerns ahead of the upcoming presidential election. Today, we're heading north to the city of Lille. So we've made it to Lille, the capital of Eau-de-France, to talk about education. This region has one of France's highest school dropout rates. There are young people who still don't have access to a computer at home to do their homework or to access online help from their teachers. I really think that that, in 2022, is just not OK. The atmosphere in this class gives me a lot of confidence because we talk together, we are listened to. For me, the priority really has to be finding a way to make sure that young people are seen as a valued resource within communities. The French motto, Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, is on display at every state school. But France persistently ranks as a country with limited social mobility. Many point the finger at France's national education system. In France, it's compulsory for a child to attend school between the ages of 3 and 16. Most schools are state-run, secular and free but families are able to choose a private school for their child if they prefer. From three to five years old, children attend École Maternelle, preschool. Then it's five years of École Primaire, primary school, followed by secondaire between the ages of 11 and 18, which is divided into college or middle school and lycée, the last stage of secondary education. All that studying leads to one exam, the baccalauréat, or le bac. Education is the biggest expense in the French government's budget. 56.5 billion euros are set aside for 2022. That's up 1.7 billion euros from the previous year. But French teachers are among the lowest paid in Europe. At the start of their careers, they can expect to earn at least 7% less than the average for OECD countries. According to the international PISA study, while French schools produce very good students, they remain amongst the most unequal in the world. The child literacy rate in the north of France is among the lowest in the country. Many voters here say education is going to be a key concern when they head to the polls. Education is important for me because it's a big part of my work. Ever since the COVID lockdowns, I really believe there's a lot that can be improved. And I think that politicians need to really take it seriously. And that means investing real money. During COVID restrictions, particularly in less wealthy areas, we had real difficulties keeping our education system going, ensuring that those kids were still accessing lessons. And there are young people who still don't have access to a computer at home to do their homework or to access online help from their teachers. I really think that that, in 2022, is just not OK. During presidential debates, they rarely speak about education. They're more focused on other things. And I get that, but I also think that education should be seen as important, especially when you look at the current state of the education system. I think there needs to be change. Many of the region's educational challenges have their roots in social inequality. Cédric Lègle is the Eau de France representative for the AFEV, an organization that seeks to give students from less affluent backgrounds a leg up through a number of initiatives. Cédric Lègle, what are the main problems that your organization is seeking to tackle? Here at FEV, the main problems we're dealing with have to do with education. It's about finding a way to make sure that each child has a decent education, that each child can choose their own path rather than having one imposed on them. Right now, there's real inequality there. 
It's important to remember that your postcode has a significant effect on how likely you are to succeed. At AFEV, we do a lot of work to strengthen the link between universities and communities, and we've realized that a lot of kids from underprivileged areas don't really have access to higher education. They don't get to choose the path they take. Instead, it tends to be a path imposed on them by France's national education system. Parental input alone isn't enough to get students to aim higher. There's also something else that's putting the brakes on at a very local level. There's cultural self-censorship, people questioning the validity of trying to go somewhere else to study. There are many factors. Why is it that so many young people choose to leave school early here in northern France specifically? More than anything, the reasons are to do with history. This region was a real industrial hub and that brought with it a wave of immigration. But then the industry here came to a halt, whether that be in the mining industry across what used to be mining towns or with the closure of factories in Roubaix and Dunkirk or in the commune of Venois in north-central France. People arrived, they were offered jobs, but then those jobs vanished, because everything came to a stop in the 1970s, right up to the 1990s. And there were a lot of families that came here to make a life, but then found themselves at sea. And now the real challenges have to do with the new generation. How do we make sure that they can see a future for themselves, despite all the challenges they face? Your organization has launched a number of educational initiatives. Are you seeing the fruits of your labor? A lot of our work concerns the fight for students' right to mentorship. Mentoring is something that might seem simple, but actually it's quite difficult to put into place. The idea here at AFEV is to have a university student who spends two hours a week with a young person who lives in an underprivileged neighborhood. It's a real partnership between two parties, and the idea is that it's regular contact two hours every week over the course of six months, which is enough time to see results. Another important aspect of this is that the older student is there on a voluntary basis. And another reason why it's different is that the sessions take place in the young person's home, so it's also about building a strong relationship with the parents. It means the parents feel implicated in their child's education and also in that exchange with the mentor. In the Hauts-de-France region, we have 1,400 young people paired up with 1,400 older students. What does the next government need to prioritize when it comes to education? For me, the priority really has to be finding a way to make sure that young people are seen as a valued resource within communities. It's not just about listening to them. It's about how we look forward together to the future. For me, that's essential. I want the next government to really see the value of citizen initiatives and to develop them. But another important thing concerns that link with communities. Earlier, I mentioned that kids living in certain disadvantaged neighborhoods don't have the same chances in life as kids living in the city centers. They don't have the same opportunities to get ahead. So the question is, how can we build bridges between universities and communities? Cédric Lègle, thank you so much for answering our questions. Schools, of course, are also central to the fight for equal opportunities. On the outskirts of Lille, a headmistress at a technical college is working to bridge the attainment gap by encouraging students to foster links with the wider community. Karina Chabot reports. It's 9am, a time when most pupils are starting school. Hi Lilia, it's Anne. Just to say that it's time to wake up. We have class at 10.30 this morning to plan the Paris project. See you then. Anne Gaillot teaches a different sort of class. They haven't been to school for two years and they need to get back into good habits. They're on social networks until 5 a.m., so the idea is to encourage them to get up and see a point in coming to school. There are never more than 12 students in this class, but they're just three for today's workshop. 
They're working on how to control their emotions. L'autorisation d'aller à la fête le samedi soir, tes parents t'accompagnent. Ah oh, non Il <laughs> faut vraiment mettre la honte là. From behavioral problems to difficult family situations, these 17 year old students dropped out with no school leaving qualifications. School's not for me. I don't know. I can't seem to fit in. But here it's better. I manage. I get angry with school because of the teachers, the atmosphere and everything. There are no grades or reports here, but workshops and assignments. Today, they're organizing a trip to Paris for 56 people with disabilities, like this counselor who has come to give them a hand. There will be disabled people there, and it will be up to you to guide them. 69 fois The atmosphere in this class gives me a lot of confidence. Because we talk together, we are listened to, all of that. Launched in September, the program is a first in France. The idea was really to put students back at the centre of the project, unlike what's usually the case, where we try to make the students fit into a system. Instead, we twist the system and make sure that the pupil is at the centre of it and that everything is built around their needs. The pupils also have to do community service. Two evenings a week, Alicia helps out at the Lille Wheelchair Rugby Club. She's doing well. She receives 580 euros per month. It's a boost, and perhaps enough to help her find her way. That brings us to the end of this episode of our election road trip. Very soon we're going to have to leave our lovely car as we head to the airport, because now we're off to the French Caribbean. Join us every day here on France 24 for the last stretch of the presidential race, the mother of all election, the presidential election. This is the time for the French to choose their president, We'll have all our special envoys on the campaign trail across the globe, the latest analysis, the best polls. Join us here on France 24. France 2022, the campaign on France 24 and France24.com.